The following is a clip from the Fully Inflated Football Podcast. If you enjoy the clip and you want to watch the rest of the show, I have a YouTube channel that uploads each episode at full length. That link is in the description down below. Check it out. You can also search Fully Inflated Football Podcast on any of your podcasting platforms. And here's the clip. Where do we even want to start with Zach Taylor? I think the first point is that this team came out entitled and flat on both sides of the ball, particularly on defense. They gave two touchdown drives in the first quarter, horrible run defense, just penalties galore, just lazy, sloppy defense that they bunkered down in the second quarter moving on. But, God, they just started so flat, and Dallas punched him in the mouth since he was not ready to play. And that's partially a head coach issue, if not fully a head coach issue. But it goes so much more beyond that, because that happens. Sometimes you just cop, get caught flat-footed, uh, trap game, like that kind of stuff. It happens to any every team. But... There's just so many underlying issues with the with the Bengals offense. Two that I want to highlight. Number one is I'm not sure Zach Taylor can actually count. Like, I don't know if he went to math class when he was in third grade. Because the amount of times that they're either running the ball or trying to pass protect, and they just run into bad numbers advantages or leave guys unblocked because of bad numbers. I was screaming at my laptop watching this, literally staring at the ceiling like, what is going on? It was that bad. I took some notes. So I tweeted this one out. There is a, and some of these are potentially on Joe Burrow, but, and that was, that's this one. It was a classic like trips left. Three wide receivers on the left side, and there was a screen aspect built into the play design. Now, what I don't know is if it was an actual RPO or if that inside slot receiver, which was Jamar Chase, was just running the screen as a decoy. I don't know if that's a play that Joe Burrow can tuck and throw it. Based on what I saw from the blockers, who didn't really seem to be giving a damn, I don't think the ball was ever potentially going to go there. So I'm more lean coaching on that one. But it's just the Bengals don't hit the easy button on this kind of stuff. They come out, trips left, and the Cowboys don't have three defenders on that side of the field. You have Jamar Chase, one of the three best run-after-catch receivers in the league, with Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins on the outside blocking. Just flip it to Jamar Chase. You have three on two, put the ball in Chase's hand, you block it up, and knowing what we know about Jamar Chase, that could be a touchdown. If he makes the safety miss, it could be a touchdown. So that stood out to me. Like, why is that not built into the offense? If you're already, you're already showing the look, Burrow didn't even think about it. They ended up running it and they lost a yard, by the way, and it set up third and nine. So you got that one. Um, They had... On the, on the next drive, they open the next drive up with a sack where they blocked they blocked the edge defender with a tight end. So, like, yeah, you're going to keep the tight end in the block. That's great. Extra blockers, more time to throw. But Jonah Williams, the left tackle, is just standing there not helping anybody. He doesn't help the guard. He doesn't have to ta- help the tackle or help the tight end. The tight end gets worked by one of the Cowboys' edge rushers. It wasn't one of their starters. But if you're going to keep the tight end in the block, don't just use him one-on-one on the edge guy. That's that's a bad blocking scheme right there. So they get sacked on that play. Um, and then on, on third and one, I think it was later in that drive, that was the Micah Parsons uh, unblocked sack where they walk up the running back. the So the Cowboys are mugged up in a double A gap blitz. We've all seen it with wide nine. You know, the rushers are way out in the nine technique. And Cincinnati walks the running back up right behind the center. They like to do this. It's not a horrible strategy. If you get that double A gap blitz, you just you basically walk the running back up and get ready for the blitz. And that allows you 
to block from empty because you can allow the tackles to block the edge guys so they don't come in unblocked. You have better interior protection right away, and you're not getting these blitzers screaming through. They're actually meeting the gap right at the uh, meeting the back right at the line of scrimmage. So it's not a bad strategy, but the the blocking scheme gets broken. And I think this is actually Lyle Collins' fault. But when it becomes a theme, you start to point at the coaching for not, you know, getting these guys up to speed on their protections. So Lyle Collins slides inside. They end up with three guys blocking Neville Gallimore, and Micah Parsons comes unblocked. So that's horrible. On the next drive, they have a false start out the gate, sloppy, and then they they run on first and 15. They run a horribly designed fake reverse toss into an unblocked edge rusher. Like, I can't even fully describe what happened on that play. It was so poorly designed, and it was just a play design thing, which is all Zach Taylor. But it was like a rever- a toss to the opposite side of where the back started. And they literally just were planning on leaving the edge unblocked, like hoping that he would be fooled by the thing. And they just ran it right into the edge guy. They lost three yards. It was second and 18. Um, They have another thing that may have been Burrow's fault, but they have two receivers on both sides of the play, third and long. And... Burrow, I think, checked into a screen here, but that's something that's built into the offense, and Zach Taylor should be paying attention. If Burrow checks into the screen and he made a mistake or maybe don't coach him up to call the screen into a bad numbers advantage, whatever happened, the scheme, Burrow's decision, the fact that it's built into the offense, it's all part of the problem. Burrow checks into a screen, and it felt like the tight end like didn't get the call, but it wouldn't have mattered Literally, he flips it out there. The tight end starts running upfield. And by the time the receiver catches the ball, there's six Cowboys defenders unblocked pursuing the receiver. So numbers just don't add up there to run a screen in that situation. And then one more note I had was coming out in big personnel. They brought in uh, Deontay Smith. They, They bring him in as a big, like, extra blocker, right? Great. Get the run game going cool um he has no idea like who to block both times they brought him in so if you're gonna use an extra blocker and put a big man on the field and take an extra receiver off the field he should probably know what the hell he's doing and they ran it once stretch zone or actually was inside zone he needed to climb right away there's no one on him he needs to climb up and find someone and it was the the safety entering the hole It was a pretty easy assignment, and he just let safety gets across his face, ends up hitting Joe Mixon in the backfield. Joe Mixon makes a miss, and they end up getting like an eight-yard carry on it. Joe Mixon made a great play, but if they block that guy, it's going to be Joe Mixon one-on-one with the free safety and maybe a touchdown. Like the, The Bengals don't have explosive runs, and they have one of the best backs in the league. Their run design and their run coaching is just putrid. So... Just everything related to numbers and blocking and technique and communication is a complete dumpster fire in Cincinnati. Complete dumpster fire. And then the other point I want to make that really bothers me is this is supposed to be a a McVay offense branched from the Shanahan system. And they certainly run the outside zones. Not great, but they run it. There's like no play action here. It's it's way too much empty and quick game early on. Where's the easy play action passes that are getting these receivers vertical, setting up these moving pockets that can help an offensive line that's struggling? It's nowhere to be found. They ran one play action boot in this game. And it was you know, they they were on they had an unblocked It was a wide zone boot, classic, unblocked edge defender, but it was the thing that the Rams do where you have T. Higgins as the slot receiver on this play blocking down on this guy. They do this with Cooper Cup all the time, but, you know, T. Higgins isn't known for his blocking. Why is Tyler Boyd not in that role, for one? But T. Higgins whiffs on the block, and the edge guy crashes down but then gets off of T. Higgins and ends up getting in Burrow's face. So, like, a busted play action, for one, like, why is Tyler Boyd not the down blocker there or a tight end like 
It's just a poor use of personnel. But after one play action, they just stopped using it. And then multiple runs after that, you're going to leave the the bl- the backside blocker and outside zone unblocked. It's part of the scheme, and that's fine. But the way that you're supposed to neutralize that, and part of what makes the Shanahan scheme so good, is the threat of the play action boot, so that you can't just crash down. Because if you crash down, whoops, Joe Burrow keeps it. He's out in space with a bunch of receivers screaming downfield. There's none of that. None of it. They tried it once, poorly executed, and then they just stopped. I think it's even worse than I expected with Zach Taylor. This is a dysfunctional offense. 